Hello everybody and welcome to this video that accompanies this article over at my website on how to create colored link website navigation bar WordPress breadcrumbs and um, this was inspired by an article over here at the design his philosophy page where he pointed out that if you take a look at the since uh, WordPress 3.0 if you take a look at the code you see some new items uh, in as classes you see current menu item current page item current menu home and in the um, submenus current post ancestor current menu parent current post parent so this uh, this affects when you have a uh, a post that's got an ancestor and um, or a menu item that has a parent item. There's also a page, page items that do this. See, current page ancestor and current post ancestor. Page ancestor is when you're in the editor and you assign a, uh, a parent to a, the, the page that you're working on, and then it would show up as the page ancestor. And you can set up the, uh, the menus to reflect that. So anyway, so what am I talking about here? All right, let me uh, just bring up this page. And uh, actually, it's, I've already styled this a little bit, so let me get rid of this styling by reloading the page. As you see, this is the 21, uh, well, 2011, I'm sorry, the 2011 theme. And uh, it's already got this styling somewhat built into it and if we go ahead and pull up uh, firebug which I'll do here and it'll take up most of the page and go ahead and click on this active link for instance you'll see that um, we've got a bunch of stuff for the body over here and if I scroll on down a little ways Let's see if this is going to show up today. Oh, no, I must not have clicked on the link properly. There it is. Okay, now we're talking. This is jumping around on me here. All right, so notice we have access, which is the, uh, div the ID of this navigation bar. Okay, current menu item. Well, let's look at all of these. Let's click on this thing. We'll see the style as it's written in the style CSS of the 2011 theme. So we have this long stream. Access again is the ID of the menu item. And then you have the current current menu item being handled and the first instance of an A link, of an anchor link. And again, the ID and current menu ancestor, current menu page item and current page ancestor Again, the first instance of an anchor after each one of these is being font given font weight bold. Okay, so as you can see, if I say normal, it changes to normal. And how I'm doing that, if you're not used to Firebug, you can just uh, enter anything in there and change things right away. All right, now this is great if you want to address this exact. Um, thing right here, the, the exact nav bar, but what if you just want to get all of the nav bars, uh, then you wouldn't want to be using this ID here. You would get rid of that. And um, so I'll do that across the board. And mind you, I'm watching to see if this is still working. And I'm still getting uh, it as bold, okay? So that's good to know that my bold is still working. What if I wanted to change the color? I can click here and enter color and uh, make it uh, light green. Oh, uh, light blue. Now notice nothing has happened. The reason why that is is because the color is being um, affected by this right here, th this uh, particular ID. And since the color is being 
addressed in the ID itself, and you see uh, way up here, the access UL, all ULs are being set with the color of 44444, which is a gray. Okay, and um, that would be my drop downs. Okay, so that's dark gray. And my hover is that dark gray. And um, so and my regular links are the EEE, which is that light gray. So that's that light gray color you're seeing is the default color of the of the links. Okay. So since that's being affected by an ID, we have to override this if we want to change it by saying uh, important. Okay. So my light blue, double click that and include exclamation mark important and bingo. You see it changed right away. All right. So. So that's how you find out what's working and what the changes are. Now, the way to actually affect this in your theme, and mind you, now I'm going to affect all menus across the board. I don't need um, anything else. If I wanted to affect just line item menus, uh, I, if I wanted to affect all lines, line items, then I could put an li right here. So it affected li.currentPageItem, etc. And then it would always affect your list items, all right? And um, that's a way of keeping it from affecting other things. So um, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's the that still stays consistent. So you can a lot of people put that in there, and um, it does the same thing basically. Just it makes it specify specify that you're only affecting LIs. All right. Now, why would you do that? Well, it's to, to, it's to affect your uh, items across here and not affect anything else that might be going on. Because right now, anything that's a menu ancestor thing in any page, not necessarily in a um, menu in a nav bar, is going to be affected by this. And anything that's in a uh, unsorted list with a list item. Anything that's included as a list item is now limited to here. So just plain old links won't get affected. Without the LI, just any link sitting around that happens to be the current the link to the per current page item, because this is affecting all anchors, it would be affected too. Okay. So uh, by putting the LI in there, it makes us the only links that are in lists, in, whether sorted or unsorted lists, um, or, well, it makes it so it only affects that. Okay, well, I hope I didn't just confuse you completely. How would you now apply this, though, so that affected this? The best way to do it is find out what your code is that's working and copy it. And just selecting that and copying it. And then go over to your theme and create what's called a child theme. A child theme is real easy. I'll show you what the basic code is. I've created a child test theme here. I'll activate. And all it is, if you look at my um, directory structure here, is a style CSS f file that's placed inside of a folder with the uh, name, in this case, 2011 test child theme. In this style CSS, you'll see, as you'll see in just a second, let me just hide this. Now that this is active notice, 2011 trial test. And there we have, the only thing that's important, totally important, is that the template be called the same as the folder name for the parent theme. Okay, in this case, 2011. And if you look at my folders, you'll see 2011 is all one word like that. See? Right there. And uh, so what we're doing is simply creating a 2011 child, a test child theme folder, and that's going to be call, it's going to look at all of my things and look for anything that's a style CSS thing. It goes by what's written in that style CSS for what it shows me 
in the themes thing. So when I go to the themes, you see it says 2011 trial test, and that's what it says here, 2011 trial test. And it shows me the version, who it's by, something written about it. Well, all of that is sitting right in here. So there's the name, my URL to my thing, that makes it clickable. Uh, the description that you saw, the author, and the uh, author's URI. And the all important thing in the version number. Okay, it can be anything you want. It usually starts out by importing the styles from the uh, parent theme. And, uh, and then you start putting in your own. Now in this one I've made it this color. And you notice I had to put in important because I'm not, ac I'm not addressing the actual ID of that individual navigation bar. I'm addressing all navigation bars. Oh, in fact, look at this. This, this by the way, this um, greater than sign means to address only the first instance of an anchor in this point, the first instance of whatever you've got here as what's affected. The second instance would not be affected. Third instance would not be affected. It makes it directly affect just the one that you want. Okay, So you can read up a little bit more on that. I'll probably do an article just on that. Okay, so now I have this in here. Uh, we'll go back to our page. And remember we had that light blue selected when we were testing. So let's go ahead and uh, do a reload. And, Hope that it's not been cached somewhere. And sure enough, there we are. There's my new, my new color, darker blue. And uh, so let's see if it works across the board. I'll look at a post. And yes, it's working on my posts. And notice it's darkened the parent and the actual post itself. Now, I don't have to have this stream of selectors all being treated the same way. I can have the ones as a current menu item be a completely different color if I want. So uh, I could simply pull out the current menu item one for instance and paste that in there and give it a color of orange. And again, important because I have to override that color that in this particular theme, the color of the nav bars was written right into the darn nav bars ID. And so we have to overcome that. And so, so this should now make it so that the um, actual current item is a different color from the parent or ancestor. And so let's see if that actually worked. And uh, make sure I got my caching all turned off. I hope so. And uh, so, no, I, I probably don't have caching turned. Let me just go ahead and delete my cache. I was having uh, constant problems with that. And blow away Cloudflare. In fact, I should be in development mode right now. If you've not used Cloudflare, this is a very important thing to know. You gotta, if you're using it all, even on a um, subdomains, even though I've turned off those other subdomains, still it's it's caching the main domain. Anything that goes on in there, so I end up with uh, problems with look, seeing things go live. And uh, so anyway, let's see. So I got that color orange. Oh, the reason it probably didn't work is I didn't put in my I didn't put in my uh, semicolon. Yeah, that could be the reason why it didn't work too. But now you just learned something about Cloudflare and clearing caches, so that's not a problem. Okay, so so reload this page and let's see what actually happens now. And there we have it. So my current item is now orange. My ancestor or parent, in this case, it's a, it's a ancestor because um, this post was accessed through this submenu. Okay, and so the ancestor is the menu. When you're talking about parents, 
that's the parent-child relationship and um, and that's that's a different kind of an issue and you could have you could have different coloring for pages as a result uh, for parent pages um, and of course when you're just on a page it's going to highlight it in blue because it's just well it's going to I'm sorry in orange because it's the assignment I gave for the current page so anything that's a current page it's going to be that now an interesting thing is that the uh, if I go to a category page and uh, now I'm looking at here we go category items I have uh, two items showing here and uh, on some themes it shows this as a list in 2011 it shows it as full posts okay so depends on your theme but if I now click on the item to go read the full the regular page you notice that the um, this has lit up and showing this as it's you know as being active because it is the actual page I'm on and it happens to be in this menu and so it indicates that if I had wanted this to also light up I would have to make another case where when I'm in this situation and on a post page that it lights up the menus category but that's a little more complicated and uh, uh, you probably don't want to even jump through those fences however you can you can make it so that it if I'm on the categories page uh, that I got to through that thing, I can make this thing light up with its own color. Okay. All righty. So it just it is complex though. So it's a little complex. All right. So let me see. Uh, what am I leaving out? Well, we've covered the, the the basics of finding out things through using the firebug thing and getting down to it. But let's let's just look at some quick source code right now for the nav page so I'm going to bring up the um, actual source and let's go down here to the navigation here we are and um, well it's kind of a mess to read this um, sorry but it's just how it came out all right, so here's my nav ID right here. And so they're using roles, which is a new thing uh, I'm not that familiar with in, in the CSS. So that's, a, that's nice to see the modern and giving us an example of roles. So there's my ID. And uh, then you have the various classes. And you, then you get into your um, subdivisions here. And you'll notice that this particular list if I'm correct, it doesn't, I'm not sure there is, yes, there is a UL, okay. So here's a UL, and it also is using an ID, but it also has a class of menu. So that's another thing that you could, you could attack, <laughs> UL.menu, and that would get um, the menus, types of unordered lists only, okay. Um, and here's the first, this is the first menu item. Now notice that they have written menu item 1960. You can write code that will actually specifically hit a, a menu item that's on your page. The problem is, is that that menu item um, may change in its number depending on how the theme is drawing out the blocks. Okay, so when you change blocks, all of a sudden this number may change and so that's why it's a little bit hairy to use IDs at all because when you go and change themes now the blocks definitions have changed and it's numbering your its blocks completely differently and uh, well it just can be risky. Well, plus what if you wanted to you know change which menu this was a was a attacking you know, or change the menu item or you have two menus on the page or whatever um, like if I go into Suffusion now, I've also got a top menu that I can throw in. Um, so I just find IDs in general are kind of a 
risky idea to go messing with if you're going to be doing a child theme, and especially if you're going to be passing this thing around and want, or wanting to use it on multiple types of pages to affect certain elements. You might want to avoid IDs and uh, just stick with classes. And because WordPress is giving us so many types of classes to draw from, um, you can do a heck of a lot now. Notice you've got menu item now. You've got menu item type, post type. So that's all one thing. You have menu item object page. That's important, especially when you're, when you're just trying to target specific page things. And then again, you've got a menu item. You do have a class for the menu item. So if you did want to go ahead and hit a menu item specifically, you could do that. Just be aware that in another theme, you may have to come in here and change that number to whatever the number is currently. All right. And um, so let's take a look at what our current item is. And uh, if I can find it, there it is. So this happens to be the current menu item and tells you so. Current menu item right there. Okay. Menu object post, the post type. Okay, the menu item type is post type, all right? And, uh, but let's, let's pick something that's, well, and we got the ancestor here. So, so mind you, this was a sub menu item. And uh, current menu ancestor was up here. And remember, because this was, what we're looking at is that um, instance where I test, done the test menus category. So, uh, current post ancestor happens to be this item here, okay? And yet um, we didn't have any code in there for a current post ancestor or current menu parent or current post parent, uh, apparently. Yes, sure enough, see, test menus category. So if we threw in those items as well into our list, then we would get some styling that would have affected that one. But notice the menu item object category. Likely that would be necessary to have in there as a modifier. So it would be menu object item object category dot current post ancestor, for instance. Uh, so, uh, so there you go. There's some more items to copy into your CSS into your child CSS and see about affecting it. Now let's go ahead and take a look with Firebug to see if I'm all wet in what I was just talking about. So uh, we'll go ahead and do a comma and let's see I might be able to get away with just doing this much. And who knows, let me see, it should show up pretty fast. If it works, and doesn't work yet. So, so this is not all you need. You must need that, um, that other item that I was talking about, the uh, post. Let's just See, one of these is going to pull it out, I'm sure. It's the old thing of getting these things in the right order, though, is always a pain. Um, no, none of those are working. So I have something in the wrong sequence from the looks of things. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know what it is. Yes, definitely. This this is out of sequence. So um, this would come first. I'm sorry to have you watching me experiment while I'm in here, fooling around. But if I remember correctly, oh, oh I didn't put any commas in. Yeah, you always do this during during webinars. 
There we go. That's all it needed was the commas. All right, so I don't need that other stuff, and it's turned my thing orange. So it now knows that that is the current menu parent or post parent, one or the other. Okay, so uh, so now you see you can affect that too. So here's some more items that we have in our arsenal. And they don't have to be in a line like this. Each one can be treated differently. Each one can be its own color. And uh, in fact, that's what I would definitely recommend. So, so there you have it. And um, here we go. And just do this and give it a color. And um, what color should we do? That was a light blue. That was a nice blue. All right. So now you, we're affecting those items in a different way. And um, and I probably left something out again, but you're getting the idea, I hope. And oh, it just has to be important. There we go. And what else did I leave out? Come on, something else being left out here. Well, that would have changed color. Um, oh, I don't know. So anyway, we got some stuff working and some stuff not working. But um, I like current page item, parent post ancestor, parent post parent, parent. Oh, the A. There you go. Always remember your selectors, folks, and you'll be good. All right. Well. It's good to see other people make mistakes, I think, because that reminds you not to make the same mistakes because you saw you know, the big guru making the mistake because he was showing you this stuff. Well, I'm no guru. I'm just um, figuring this stuff out, out the same way you are, and this is all new um, additions to WordPress that are pretty darn exciting. And so we're getting somewhere. Well, I hope that this rather lengthy little bit of video has helped you dig in and get an idea of how you yourself can make child theme additions uh, to your own pages. And so I'm going to take all of this that I've done here in Firebug and I'm going to go over to my theme and uh, close Firebug out. And I'm just going to copy over what I had and paste over it, knowing with confidence that Firebug showed me that those are all working and now I'm apply I've applied this to every single one of my nav bars again if you want to specify only certain nav bars you've got to put in their IDs or find some other way of making them unique by giving them unique classes okay and many nav bars have unique classes for you to take advantage of so you just have to look for those see if the nav bars got a unique class somewhere alrighty so uh, in fact, let's take a look at this one right here. Remember, the nav ID was access, role, navigation. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a unique class assigned to this thing, just an ID. So you may have to find out some way in the theme to either get one in there, or it just might not be possible, and you may have to work with the IDs in that case. And which means if you switch themes, you'll have to run around and find out what your navigation bar's ID is in the new theme. All right. Well, I hope all this has been really useful and interesting. And uh, the code for this stuff is going to be in here. I will include that little bit of code that I just wrote. But now you are getting an idea of what I meant by your best selectors in here. And uh, you notice I usually include the UL and the LI, but you don't always need the UL, you can experiment, find out if you're going to need it. You definitely need it with a submenu, okay? Um, but uh, with the regular links, maybe not. These are good practices though to follow. The idea of finding your best selectors is to find out which one is actually needed for yours. The selector may be, as I said, an actual navigation ID and not a class at all in here. But if you're lucky and you've got a class that you can put in here, that'll be a better approach 
if you can do that, use that same class across uh, various styles or various themes that you might want to load in. All right, so I'll have the rest of the code in here that I've just uh, been doing and showing you. We found out our, together. And if you have any kind of questions, go ahead and post them uh, to this, and I'll keep up with the comments and try to answer whatever I can and maybe make another video to clarify anything that I've left out here. Okay, take care.